All right, hello everybody, Tom McAllister, or at least that's what I'm obligated to say, legally, of course, here today, and we are doing some Survivor stuff. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm going to be basically showing you my favorite Survivor build to run. This is it. We got the Lith Dance With Me combo, which you're going to see come in handy for me many times uh, in this video. We also have Adrenaline, you know, just for those clutch moments where I'm being... Uh, chased when the last gen finishes and I'm already injured. This comes in handy and then adrenaline is just kind of nice to have generally. And of course we have Iron Will which will uh, make me not make noise when I'm injured which is very good on Fang because she is very loud. However, I didn't explain what the Lith dance with me combo is. So Lith, when you rush, do a rushed vault through a window so that's any kind of uh, window vault where you're holding shift during it. Uh, you will get a 150% speed boost for 3 seconds. Which is already pretty powerful on its own, but then you tie it with Dance With Me, which this is my favorite combo in the game. When performing a fast vault, or leaving a locker in a sprint, you leave no scratch marks for 3 seconds. So basically, whenever I fast vault the window, or the pallet, or whatever I'm going over, I get 150% speed boost, and I also don't have scratch marks for the exact same amount of time. Um, this, honestly, when I see this build in action, when I see Dance With Me and Lith together, it always gets me when I'm killer, and you'll see it get quite a few killers here tonight, too. I will be pro providing some live commentary over the, um, over the matches as well, because I did record these commentary lists, um, so I am going to be providing commentary over the matches as they happen. Um... I also want to give a huge thank you to um, Hell is Empty is one of the people I was playing with. We weren't on comms or anything during this. Um, they just were playing at the same time as me and said, hey, you want to you know, come play with us? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? And so uh, Hell is Empty and Anikus were two people that I was playing with in this video. So you'll see their names pop up in the matches and throughout um, the video. Anywho, uh, let's get to those matches. Okay, hello, I have moved over to the left side of your screen now. I am going to get rid of this header as well as we don't really need it. I don't know why I have that on when I'm recording these videos. Anyways, uh, so this first match we're going to be looking at is actually a pig match and one of the clutchest pig matches I've ever participated in. During this, I just want to give you sort of my thoughts while I'm playing Survivor here and kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. Conveying your thoughts while playing Killer is much easier than conveying your thoughts while playing Survivor. You're a lot more jambled. Uh, there's a lot more anxiety when you're playing Survivor. So I felt like recording it commentaryless and then adding the commentary in afterwards when I'm going to be much less stressed watching these matches uh, was going to be much better. So, God, this is taking a while. All right, so here we are. We are on the Ironworks of Misery to begin with. I have to forgive me for the quality. I think this is still kind of rendering. Anyways, so immediately, I know it's a pig because I see the machine. I see the jigsaw trap back there. And uh, I'm going to, this is one of my favorite loops right here on this map. I think it's one of the best loops in the game. So we are actively opening a chest simply because I've been seeing this key glitch a lot recently I wanted to test it I got a map instead which I'm not mad about honestly I like maps I like using maps um, yeah they're fine so we can see that the killer has corrupt intervention now which is unfortunate I'm gonna m turn up the volume a bit here it's kinda quiet um, not sure why can you even hear it it's very quiet. Hold on, let me check my mixer real quick. So you see me working the gin here. I'm kind of already partially disturbed because I don't like having someone go down before we even have our first gen done. Which we finished our first gen, luckily. Now the pig ho hooked the Steve right there and could clearly tell I was there. She's following my scratch marks now. Um, so I'm going to go for the loop here. I think I have enough time, but I end up making the mistake of not. I think I get caught on something around here or I just 
Yeah, I simply just don't play it well enough. So she gets the hit on me there. I get a Omega boost thanks to the hit plus the Lith, which is nice. I think she probably went back to break the window, but I can't be uh, completely sure. So once again, we're using our map here. I'm simply trying to find a gen to work on at this point that isn't uh, corrupted. We well, can also see that the Steve's trap is active, so we're going to hope that Steve gets that off before uh, anything else goes down. I thought the burning was a hex totem. It was not. It was the barrel next to me. Now, I'm going to make a pretty ballsy decision here and choose to go back to the gen that I was working on, which Hell is Empty is now on. Hell is Empty offers to heal me there, but me having Adrenaline, I have zero interest in healing at this moment. I, I, I'd like to play towards the Adrenaline. I like to stay injured. I should probably run Resilience on this build, but I'm just, I'm just a creature of habit and I refuse to change it. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot to commentary here. Gen work is going to be the same universally. You're going to sit there, you're going to work a gen, you're going to wait for a skill check, check to pop up, and then you're going to keep working. So we finish this gen, that's the second gen of the match. I'm going to go ahead and take the heal at this point, because the Jeff, as far as I know, is being chased, so I have nothing to really concern myself with. So I'm going to let them heal me. We're going to try to heal. I get concerned here because I do hear the pig. She swings and misses there. I'm going to go through the window here. She actually follows me through my lithium. I actually get very lucky with a pallet stun here. She swung too early and I waited very long to drop the pallet on her. Now that that is a pallet that I will say is unsafe and that you should not try to loop the killer around. There's no reason to. Um, you, you're hardly going to get any worth out of it. You'd get more worth out of a pallet like this one. So once again, using that map, trying to find a gen, doing putting in the work. I'm running for it now. I'm running for it. Yeah, this pig doesn't really utilize the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the stealth, as far as I can tell. I don't ever see her crouch. I don't ever see her use her dash. It's purely just M1s and traps with this pig. So that's interesting, I guess. It's, it's a way to play. I wouldn't say it's my most recommended way. So this Jeff's coming up to me. He's injured luckily he knows to hop on the gen pretty immediately i i focus gens i really do i don't unhook people very often unless i absolutely need to i'm going to work on the gen especially with this but this build is purely geared towards my own survival and uh wasting the killer's time now this steve has kindred which is ridiculously helpful to us because we can see that the pig is camping him so us knowing this uh, we're going to utilize our time because as long as that pig is hanging around Steve, he's not coming for me. He's not coming for the Jeff. And he's certainly not coming for the Cheryl either. Now the Cheryl's trying to move in, trying to help the, uh, the Steve here. Gets him down. Gets him on the run. Okay, now we are on one gen. And this ends up being a much closer match than you think it's going to on site. Uh, let's just say it gets bad uh, towards the end here. So I want to fix this gen because it's right by an exit. And my adrenaline boost is going to send me directly to that exit. And it's just going to be an overall good time for me. So there's a Steve. I'm not sure. Oh, Steve trap is active. I think she put another trap on him, actually, because he already had a trap on. So right there, I already see that the pig is wasting traps. And at most, she can have three left now, probably. And at least she'll have two left. So there I see her. I'm like, okay, she's gonna... Wouldn't likely come for me here. So I'm gonna want the Lith Dance With Me combo. Watch how well it works. She immediately loses me. I think she may have hit the gin here. Yeah. 
Might have pop, actually. Immediately hit the gen there. Lost me uh, almost immediately. Very, very quick. So we're going to hop right back on that gen. Now, my immediate thought here is, oh, what if she has surveillance? But my immediate thought after that is, well, if she does, I'm just going to take the same exit again, you know? And she's not coming back, so obviously she didn't have surveillance, which is a shame because, uh, as you saw in my piggy video, it's a great perk to run on her. Cool. So I'm immediately going for this exit. Hell is Empty's trap is active, which is unfortunate. The Jeff is over there. I, I appreciate that Kindred even works in death. Like, this survivor is literally contributing until they cannot anymore with Kindred. We, Kindred's so helpful. It's such a good perk. I'm debating opening the gate here. But I won't until I see the pig. Until I see her coming for me. Which even then, I'm not in that much danger. I'm first hook. I don't have a trap on, and even if she puts a trap on me now, it won't activate because there's no gens to be done. But she's actually committing to Hell is Empty right now, who is running the fuck away. Unfortunate pallet drop there. Now this is where things start getting tough. So she notices me pretty off top here. Gets a hit on me. I tried to figure out I completely missed my opportunity there. She immediately leaves me alone, though. Dance with me will uh, activate even if you're exhausted, too. So I'm trying to 99 both gates at this point. Because I see that this one's not. So I'm going to try to 99 both of them. Now, why why am I 99ing the gates and not opening? Well, primarily because I don't know if this killer has Blood Warden. I don't want to have to find out if this killer has Blood Warden. It's just better to keep the gates closed until you're sure you're ready to get everyone out. So... That's my plan here. I'm going to go ahead and 99 this. I think I may open it, though, because the situation is looking bad. I'm contemplating it. I open it, yeah. Because I don't foresee her hooking me. I don't foresee her hooking Jeff. I'm actually going to go open the other exit now. Yeah, this is where things start getting nutsy for me. I'm kind of like, uh, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good at all. So I go ahead and I open both exits. I feel like she's leaving the Jeff, so now I'm going to go for him. But I think she actually doubles back, gets the Jeff. I'm going to start gunning for Cheryl here. Okay, so Ironwell, once again, she doesn't know that I'm here. She has zero clue. I'm going to gun for Cheryl right now. This is probably a bad decision because, yeah, they're not even halfway recovered. So now she's going to go for me. I'm going to use my Lith. She misses. There's no pallet here because I used it earlier. And I make it to this pallet, but it's too late for me. She's caught up with me. Jeff, however, 4%ed off of the fucking hook. Now, she, she debated right there. Do I go back and try to get the Jeff, or do I go for the Fang here? Now, she's putting traps on us, I think, just for blood points, because she can't. The traps aren't going to activate in the end game. The only ad he, um, thing that's really adhering us is the fact that Cheryl's trap is active. So now I'm hooked. We're all kind of like, ah, oh, this kind of fucking sucks. Now I see the Jeff. I kind of want them just to leave me. Um, even though I, I know that the Cheryl can, I think that it's just more advisable. However, my teammates clutch the fuck out of this match here at the end. So watch. Jeff comes and gets me. The pig's gone. I'm telling him that we should leave. I don't notice the key that he has yet. So I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna trust my teammates because I don't see any reason why they'd lead me astray. We're all congregating in the building here. And we all hatch it, which is still fucking insane to me, honestly. A crazy win there. A crazy win there. So that's the first match where we get to demonstrate this build. This next, I think he gets me on the hook. 
Yeah, so once again, this is just normal setup stuff. He hits me here. We've got a Wraith who has an interesting add-on. I'm running. He he ends up getting me here, yeah. Ooh, but I do make him whiff it, which I think probably upset him a little bit, but fuck him. Shouldn't have been a goddamn Wraith. He's right behind me here. I was hoping to make him whiff again. I did not. I should have doubled back. So he hooks me here. He's going to go ahead and throw me up on the hook here. Oof. Um, we break his ruin right there, which is great for us. He somehow doesn't notice the Cheryl right there. Fucked right off. Okay. So now Cheryl's going to come for me. Cheryl coming in for the save. Yoinkle. Pulls me down. I'm waiting for heals. I realize Cheryl's not going to give them to me, so I say fuck it. We start working again. Cheryl obviously knows something that I don't, which is that, yeah, this douche dick is back. And he whiffs it again. Kind of impressive. Impressively. He should have definitely had me there. Okay, we drop that. So he's gonna... This, this Wraith is just kind of a tunneler, unfortunately. He guns straight for me. We're on five gens, mind you. He has no reason to fucking tunnel me yet. I'm being a pallet dropping fool right now. Um, okay. So, lift dance with me. Run away. Although I am kind of hoping that he chases me here. Um, I can hear him burning. I know he's, he's coming out. I don't know what world made him think he was going to get that hit. He actually doubles back to the end of the shack here. I got caught on something there. I don't know what that was. I double back into the shack. This is why shacks are great loop. If the killer doesn't break that pallet immediately, you should definitely take advantage of it because you can loop them through there a couple times. All right, so we're seeing a bunch of gens pop here, which is great. Jeff, unfortunately, I think goes down around that gen that he almost had done. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Your main goal when being chased by the killer is not necessarily to never get hooked it's to waste the killer's time long enough that you give your teammates the opportunity to do what they need to so me and cheryl here are gonna try to run up on this gen because yeah he's gonna kick it we're gonna double up on it we we want to get in there we want to get on that gen i take a hit there we finish it so now we're down to two gens he's gotten two hooks this is tough for this wraith um and this is where he actually starts committing to just full stop tunneling the Jeff, unfortunately. And honestly, I can't even be that mad at him. I see why he did it. You're in a sort of position where you know you're not going to get any kills on any of these other people. I'm one hook. Jeff's one hook. Uh, the Claude and the Cheryl haven't been hooked at all. So honestly, he could go for the tunnel on me. But he goes for the tunnel on the Jeff, unfortunately, which you'll see here momentarily. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> okay. I think he's coming for me, but then I see the Jeff go down and I go, well, fuck, dude. I'm fucking sorry. We're down to one gen now. This is a very, very tough position for the Wraith. He knows full and well. That he's not going to get any other downs here. He's not going to get any kills out of this match. If he does not tunnel the Jeff. So while I see the strategy, I'm trying to pull him away at this point. I'm hoping that my sound notifications and scratch marks and so on and so forth are going to lead him away from the Jeff. But I, I don't think he ends up committing to it. If I'm remembering this match correctly. <sighs> Okay. So I hear a gin being worked. I'm going to go hit it. Unfortunately, a lot of the time you're going to have to prioritize. Prioritize. What the fuck's wrong with the way I talk? Prioritize the gens over um, helping anyone else. It's just simply how it is. And I can see that the Cheryl's trying to pull him down, and the Wraith is probably right there waiting for them to do so. So me and this me and this Claude are just gonna keep work working away. So 
So we finish it. I see the shadow take a hit for the Jeff. I see the shadow go down for the Jeff. But the Wraith is literally so uninterested in the fucking Jeff, or in the Cheryl, that he's going to leave her to tunnel this poor, uh, this poor Jeff. So I'm going to double back. I'm going to try to save the Cheryl here. I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. But he is quite literally so uninterested in the Cheryl. I don't even know where she was, honestly. And I think she had Unbreakable or some shit. That bitch just disappeared. <laughs> So anyways, we're going to fast forward here just because I'm trying to get the hatch and this fucking Claudette will not let me have it. And when I go back to get it, he's there. So I just say, fuck it, I'm off. Hatch will be against a pyramid head. So we had a pretty diverse cast of uh, killers today. We got the Wraith who is, well, we, we technically had two stealth killers, but I mean the pick and the Wraith are very different internally how they work and in this one we have a pyramid head which is exactly the kind of killer that can break my fucking strategy completely the whole concept of him having a fucking power that reaches uh through windows and uh pallets and stuff are literally the things of nightmares for someone with a build like i have where my build is almost based entirely around the fact that i am faulting all the time Alright, so I should be working here, but I'm not. Hey, we're going to look at the first mistake that the killer makes here. The first mistake that he makes is the fact that he does not pay enough attention to the gens uh, on the map, unfortunately. You're going to see me and the Jeff finish this because he's spending so much time chasing the Kate that we're able to get a gen done before so for someone's hooked, and that is extremely, extremely demoralizing when you're a killer. To see a gen pop when you don't have a single person hooked. For me, at least. Remember, these are all my viewpoints. You don't have to look at the game the way I do. You don't have to think about things the way I do. This is just how I view things. So we're working this gen. We can, we can skip forward. We finished that gen. I go down to the basement. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Uh, I guess nothing really. I'm just opening chests for the sake of opening them, I guess. Um, next up. Okay, so the Nia gets hooked first. I'm looking around trying to figure out what we got going on here. I hear this gen being worked on, so of course I'm going to come over there. I then hear the pyramid head terror radius. I jump. I hear him already prepping his ranged attack, so I'm going to try to draw him away from that gen, and successfully do, I might add. Now, I was kind of impressed with how fucking close he got to me there, without even really trying to. Also, he has Bamboozle. I know that now. I hear him breaking that pallet, and I know I have to leave. I unfortunately step right into his trail there. I bait him into thinking I'm taking the window and then I fuck right off. He's chasing me, he's chasing me. Now the main thing I'm doing here, I'm just baiting his uh, attack, essentially. I'm trying my damnedest to make him, you know, try to hit me. Did he get me here? Nope. I do another bait and just keep switching up on him. He keeps missing me, which I think eventually, yeah, is what makes him give up on me and go for the Jeff instead. Now, I'm going to try to get on the gen that the Jeff's working on. Keep in mind, he's only hooked the Nia so far. You know, he's got me Cage of Atonement, but he doesn't have me, right? And he decides to hook the Jeff, and I think I know what strategy he's doing here. I think he's going to hook the Jeff and me. As many times as it takes to get to, to tier 2, you know, and then once we get pulled down the third time, we're still going to have our judgment. He's going to be able to instamori us. I understand the strat, and I see it, and I've done it. So I know what he's going for. Okay, so we're about to pop a gin. I believe he's being ran around by Hell is Empty at this point. We're down to two gins. 
I once again see him. I know him. I try baiting him into swinging. Ooh, he, he barely misses me there, I might add. Barely misses me. I use my lift dance with me combo. I fuck right off out of there. He has missed me multiple times now. He's got to be frustrated. And we're about to see the brink of his frustration here in a second. So I see the Neo working over there. I wonder if she has a gen worked on. I'm going to try to get to her. I'm going to go try to help her with it, essentially. I hop on the gen, and then Hell is Empty was running this pyramid head around, making a miss as well. And... Wait for it. I think it was that one. No, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the one. <laughs> so after so many missed shots, uh, our killer, let's get his name, caught DCs. Uh, gives up completely. It's kind of running a, a build here that I would have in mind if I was playing Pyramid Ed. Um, but that's pretty much where that where things end for him, unfortunately. Um so those, those are the games I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you this build in action because I, I'm a really big fan of it. I think it works very well. And uh, I wanted to get some serve content out there. So there that is. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful day when you see this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know when this video is coming out. Remember, you can always watch me play live over at twitch.tv slash Tom McAllister or something. I'm live there pretty much every other day with some DVD or some other game. You know, just tune in, see what I'm doing, and I'll see you there. So thank you so much. Bye.